Hello everyone and welcome to our today's uh, class. It is on the topic measurements 1, which is actually topic 2 in a physics secondary school physics book 1 actually. So before I start this session, I would like to thank you for your continued support on YouTube by subscribing to Kind Tuition Academy. So today I want to start by giving you some facts that it is not failure that we are usually scared of. We are, square, we are scared of being seen by others starting from the bottom. But I think it's because we don't realize that every expert that we see in the world today was once a beginner. So it uh, sounds funny that actually everyone wants to win but no one wants to prepare. So I'm leaving you with this statement to go and think about it. Hard work beats talent every time talent doesn't work hard. So let's start with the measurements one. Actually measurement uh, from English actually, me the word measurement, uh, it is just a standard against which something is uh, judged. A standard against which something is judged. Now for you to measure anything, you need to understand uh, the quantity of the object or the quantity of that substance that you want to measure. Two, you also need to understand the units for measuring that particular substance. Now there are two uh, actually quantities in physics we have what we call basic physical quantities and derived quantities so we need to differentiate between these two so basic physical quantities these are quantities that can not be obtained from any other physical quantities while derived quantities these are quantities that can be obtained by either multiplication or division of the basic physical quantities now these quantities are actually assigned an international unit called the SI unit so let's look at examples of uh, basic physical quantities uh, with their respective uh, SI units. So one, we have length, the SI unit is meter. Two, we have time, the SI unit is uh, second. Three, we have mass, the SI unit is kilogram. Four, we have uh, electric current, the SI unit is amperes. We have thermodynamic temperature, the SI unit is uh, Kelvin. We have amount of substance, the SI unit is mole. Then we have uh, luminosity in density, the SI unit is candela. We can also look at uh, examples of uh, derived quantities with their respective SI unit. Remember, we've said that uh, derived quantities, these are quantities that can be obtained by either multiplying or dividing the basic physical quantities. Now, I'll give you around uh, five examples of derived quantities with their respective SI unit. One is uh, volume, the SI unit is cubic meter. Two, we have density, the SI unit is kilogram per cubic meter. Three, we have area, the SI unit is a uh, square meter. Four, we have pressure, the SI unit is pascals or newton per meter square. Then uh, lastly, we have uh, power, the SI unit is watt. The SI unit is watt. Now, we call them derived quantities because they can be obtained from the basic physical watt quantities. For example, density is equal to mass over volume. So that means actually when you have mass, you can determine uh, density. So remember, mass is... A basic physical quantity but we are obtaining density from what mass same case to volume volume can also be obtained from mass which is a basic physical quantity we can also look at something like area area actually for something like a square we take length times width or simply length squared for something like a, a square remember length is a basic physical quantity so actually area is being obtained from length which is a basic physical quantity therefore area is a what uh, a derived quantity the next uh, course of action will actually look at uh, length itself we need to define what we mean by length now length is a measure of distance between two points a measure of distance between two points the SI unit of length is a uh, uh, the, the, the meters here the SI unit of length is actually meter now, for you to measure the length of an object, there are two ways or two methods involved. One, we have what we call the uh, uh, the estimation method. Two, we have what we call the accurate method, which involves using measuring instruments, actually. So, but for you to determine which instrument to use for measuring length, you need to know th two things, actually. One, the quantity of the object to be measured, and two, the SI units or the units for measuring that object. Now we've said we have two methods actually let's discuss them one we have method of estimation so in the method of estimation actually here we take an object uh, whose length is known then we compare it with an object uh, whose length is not known the object whose length is known 
we call it a standard object. So for example, if I want to estimate the height of a tree, I can compare it to a rod whose length is known by using the formula height of the tree over height of the rod should be equal to length of shadow of the tree over length of shadow of the rod. Now in accurate, measure, uh, in accurate method, we use measuring instruments such as the tape measure. We also have the meter rule. We also have a micrometer screw gauge. And we also have what we call the vernier calipers, which are actually discussed in a measurement two that is covered in a, a book two, actually, physics book two. Then we can also look at what we call a, a meter rule. What is a, a meter rule? So actually, a meter rule is just an instrument used for measuring length. It is calibrated from zero centimeter to 100 centimeter. So it is called a meter rule because the maximum length it can measure is actually one meter, which is equal to 100 centimeters. Now, there, there is a procedure that we use when uh, uh, obtaining measurements on a meter rule. So what are the steps that you need when taking measurement on a meter rule? One is that uh, you place the meter rule against the object. Two, uh, you place the object uh, against the zero mark uh, of the meter rule, of the scale of the meter rule. Then thirdly, you place your eye perpendicular to the scale of that meter rule. Why should we place the eye perpendicular to the scale of that meter rule? This is to avoid errors due to parallax. This is to avoid errors due to parallax. Now we can look at a few calculations, examples of calculations involved in a method of estimation and actually reading of the meter rule. We said you can uh, find the estimate, the length of uh, an object by actually uh, estimation method. So this is uh, an example that are uh, of a question involving the same. So uh, in this example, it reads, in an experiment to estimate the height of uh, a school flag post, the following readings were recorded. One, we have a uh, height of the rod was equals to 100 centimeter. Length of shadow of the rod is equals to 80 centimeter. Length of shadow of the flag post was equals to 400 centimeter. So we are required to determine the height of the flag post, but express the answer in meters. So here we say that in estimation method, you actually compare the heights of different uh, objects and the length of the shadows. Uh, we usually have a standard uh, object. Like for this case, the standard object is actually uh, the height of the, the, the rod. So here we'll say that uh, height, so we want to determine the height of the flag post. So we can say that height of the flag post of the flag post uh, divided by we are comparing heights with heights uh, divided by height of the rod uh, must be equal to uh, a length a length of shadow length of shadow of the flag post flag post divided by length of shadow of shadow of uh, of the rod of shadow of the rod now we are required to determine the height of the flag post so the height of the flag post in this case is the unknown so we say height of the flag post of the flag post divided by height of the rod. Remember we are given the height of the rod as 100 centimeters. So we'll substitute 100 centimeter is equals to length of shadow of the uh, flag post. We are given the length of shadow of the flag post as 400 centimeter. We divide by uh, length of shadow of the rod. So length of shadow of the rod we are given as 80 centimeter. So if I multiply both sides by 100 centimeter times 100 centimeter Actually, the 100 centimeter in this side will cancel so that we have a height of the flag post of the flag post being equal to so centimeters and centimeters will cancel off uh, zero and zero will cancel off eight into eight one eight into forty that is five so that five times a hundred you actually get a uh, five hundred centimeter but the question wants us to express the answer in uh, meters. So we know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. What about 
500 centimeter. So that is 500 centimeter over 100 centimeter times 1 meter. So actually the centimeters cancel off, two zeros, two zeros cancel off. So they we remain with the answer as being a 5 meter. So that is how to solve a question involving estimation of the height. Now I have uh, an exercise here so that uh, students can try and see whether they understood the previous example. So in case it is not clear, I'm going to read it. So it reads, in an experiment to estimate in an experiment to estimate the height of the tree, the following measurements were recorded. One, we have height of the rod was equals to 180 centimeters. Length of shadow of the rod is equals to 116 centimeters. Length of shadow of the tree is equals to 840 centimeters. So you are required to calculate the height of the tree. Now I've actually worked it out and uh, found the answer as uh, to be equal to uh, 1,303 uh, whole number, 13 over 29, which is approximately 1,303.45 centimeters. So try working out and see whether you get this answer. In case you get a different answer, that means you have not got it right. So you can actually uh, go through the previous example and see where you went wrong. Now we are going to <coughs> solve our example 2, which is involving a, a determination of a, a length using a meter rule. So the question reads, what is the reading indicated by the arrows P1, P2 and P3 on the meter rule below? So here is the meter rule. So if we look at actually arrow P1, so arrow P1 is at the mark between uh, one mark between 70 and actually, so if this is 70, this is 71, so it means the previous figure was actually 69. So the previous figure was uh, 69 centimeters, but we are coming up to the last mark of the 69th centimeter. So that means it was actually 69.9 centimeters, 69.9 centimeters. But P is between the 69.9 centimeter and the 70th mark. So it is actually at the middle. So that means we'll add here actually 0 0.05 centimeters so that we obtain the, the final value as 69.95 centimeters. 69.95 centimeters. Now P2, actually this one can be read directly. Uh, clearly it is at the 71.00 uh, centimeter mark. Then uh, P3 is actually if this is 71 this is 72 then uh, p3 is at the middle one two three four five so this should be 71 plus 0 0.05 so that we get 71 uh, point actually uh, five 71.5 centimeters now there is also an exercise here it is a uh, uh, it, it reads what is the reading indicated by the arrows A, B, and C in the uh, meter rule shown below. So we have point A here uh, at the very beginning uh, mark. We have point B here and you also have point C here. So I've also indicated here the answers so that uh, in case you doubt whether you have actually worked it uh, clearly, you can confirm with uh, these answers. And in case you don't get these answers, you can easily refer to our example up there so that you can see where you actually went wrong so uh thank you for this class let's meet uh, next time lastly we look at mass actually mass is defined as the quantity of matter in a body uh the quantity the measure of quantity of matter in a body simply that so with mass we actually saying that mass is also uh, the same everywhere that is it does not change from place to place or simply put it is constant why is mass constant mass is constant because particles within an object actually remain constant they remain constant now mass is actually uh, remember the SI unit for uh, measuring mass is actually the kilogram although there are some uh, subdivision sub, sub multiples and uh, multiples of kilogram for example, we, are, we know that a, a, a thousand grams is equal to one kilogram. We know that a million milligrams is equal to uh, one kilogram. And we also know that a thousand kilograms is equal to one 
ton a thousand kilogram is equals to one ton now mass is measured by an instrument called uh, a beam balance it is measured by an instrument called a beam balance so we have come to the end of our today's lesson uh, i thank you and uh, uh remember to subscribe to kind tuition academy so uh, today i don't have a story but i can give you a question that i think it is actually it is just english playing with our minds why is it that when you say that uh, uh he she gave her her book it is correct in english yet when you say that he gave him him book that is wrong why 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 hmm? this shows that this english actually has some level of what we call in kiswahili umama thank you guys